Praise the Lord. Come on in and get your seat. We're very glad you're happy here. Or excuse me, that you're here. We're happy that you're here. Very glad you're happy here. I hope you're happy here. Yeah, you're going to be. You're going to be. We're going to worship the living God, which is our greatest, our greatest honor. Don't you think so? Thank you for that lady who said yes. Let's, uh, let's stand up and pray and ask the Lord to... Uh, what we want is more of our Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. Father God, we praise you today that Jesus taught us to pray that your name to be hallowed and become holy and honored in the sight of all men. And then he said, for your kingdom to come, which we pray for today, for your kingdom, your kingdom and your will to be done today on earth as it is in heaven. But give us this day our daily bread of Jesus. Feed us the living word of God that we can be your people in this day of trial, in this day of service, in this day of testing, and also being raised to a new level to deal with th things that are going on in our city. And we just thank you today for our worship team, for the people that are coming in today. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing and you're going to do. Save America, save Israel, and save billions of people, I pray. Amen. Amen. Great. 
Yes, God. Cause our spirits to be awake this morning, God. Wake us up, Jesus. We want to be alert and ready for what you want to do, God. Jesus. Joy to the world, the glory is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every wrong prepare Him. Let heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and nature sing. Let them and men and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the same. You gotta dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes you gotta stare down the giant, worship from the lion. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the clouds, louder in the valley, trusting that it's gonna get you. Sometimes you gotta wait. Anywhere
times that you've humbled yourself, that you've made yourself low, you've bowed down and you said, Lord, I don't understand. I don't understand. But I'm choosing right now, in the midst of it all, to worship. He's seen those moments and it has blessed his heart beyond anything you could fathom. It has blessed him so much when his ear extends from one corner of the globe to another and he hears the cry of the suffering and the lost and the broken. He hears those that curse his name and he sees you yet in the midst of your pain. You choose to make yourself low and worship him. It touches his heart beyond anything you can imagine. So just let his love wash over you right now. Let his love find you right now.
I know you're all aware of this, but I'm just so struck as Andre was talking about humbling ourselves and letting the love wash. That love caused God Almighty to humble himself to become a seed in the womb of a woman, to go through gestation, through a birth canal, and enter this world so helpless he couldn't even roll over. This is the creator of the universe. And he had to learn how to sit up, how to crawl, how to walk. I mean, it's just mind boggling. And, and so Lord, we just wanna humble ourselves. You didn't cling to your position, to your power and authority, to exercising it, to receiving all the glory. You came and were born in a stable. Such humility, Lord. We, we want to humble ourselves. And, and I look at the wise men behind me bringing their gifts to this infant. And our gifts are laying down that selfishness, laying down our unlove, laying down our pride, our independent life, and becoming dependent as he did, becoming dependent on the Father, becoming dependent on the Holy Spirit and on all that Jesus died to bring to us. So we thank you, Lord.
lie on me to be your son Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord So come on my soul Oh don't you get shy on me You know, as we start coming into this season of Christmas, it, um, I learned as a young pastor, I had a very sweet childhood, but not everybody did. And I heard how painful it was for some. Then all of us have memories. I think of my relatives, my mom, dad, relatives that are in heaven. And uh, 
It causes pain and love. I found out that the love of God has pain in it as long as we live on this world because of the things that go on in people's lives who we love. But I just felt like he was just saying, you know, tell everybody to give me their heart at this time because things are rising in our hearts today. I think especially as we come into this season that are beyond our ability to cope with it. That is in a sanctified, holy way per se, because it's so painful. Some things are still so deep and have lasted so long. And other circumstances in our life, you know, I was just surrendering myself again. I was at a conference this week and uh, in Phoenix and uh, the Holy Spirit was there, you know, but he was saying, you know, to surrender and so forth. But even today, I feel it here, obviously at this time. And um, Lisa Whitman and I are gonna teach about really cleansing the heavens. And uh, love is going to cleanse the heavens so that everybody can see the God who made them. There's coming a God consciousness to the nations of the earth and even a truer, deeper, richer God consciousness into our hearts as believers so that we can truly live by the power of the fruit of the Spirit and overcome all the things that have, been, have come our way. And I just know, Lord, that <clears throat> you're the only one that can heal a broken heart. You're the only one, the Holy Spirit, of course, and God our Father, that can heal the places in our heart that we are struggling with today and have for years, off and on, and other things that have happened. So we're in the arms of God. Jesus said, no one can pluck you out of the Father's hands. So, Lord, we just bless you and thank you that you do love us, and that uh, you've called us for this time and you're still here because he has something for you to do before you leave. And it may be years, you know, and uh, some people are saying, some of the prophets are saying, the Lord's coming relatively soon, you know, seven to 10 years, whatever. But uh, we're all gonna finish well, don't you believe that? Yes. You know, I just felt so impressed that um, the Lord is only asking us to drink. Oh. He said, come. He already called us. And to drink is totally natural and normal. It's not like, you know, go walk a mile on your head or something crazy, <laughs> you know, to get my attention. He's saying, I have living water. I mean, it's alive, it's living water. And I want you to come, I've already invited you. Every single one of us can drink. It's just so normal. So, Lord, you know, for me to drink, it's either I'm, you know, in the word, reading or worship. Just he just says you've got he's just telling me you've got to unplug and drink. You've got to drink. And I'm always there living water, living water. <laughs> so, Lord, help us instantly just drink we can drink in the car we can drink in the anywhere you've made it so normal i mean babies have to learn to what walk they have to learn to talk they have to learn the la english language they're here but they don't have to learn to drink so lord thank you this is an eight in us this isn't some only the super spiritual get this or something. You said, come all ye that are thirsty. That's the only requirement. And Lord, you're causing the difficulties in this life to make us thirsty. Thank goodness. I wasn't thirsty enough. I don't, it's not a good feeling, but it's compelling us to find you, Lord like we never have before. And we thank you that this thirst compels us and pushes us to your living water. And we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, that, that's beautiful. Back in um, Isaiah 61, when Jesus talked about what he would do and who he would heal, 
It was the brokenhearted, and the best translation is, is that it's a broken connection. And, you know, when we have struggles, Satan comes and God comes. And who we yield to determines what happens. And it's so easy to say things like that, but, you know, with the pain and the issues of our lives, Jesus is basically waiting for us to come to him. He says, come unto me, all of you that are weary, heavy laden, right? He says all that. But I find out that to let him come in with his, his presence, it's like the pain seems to manifest. And so that's, sometimes we stop there, but he wants to destroy it. That's why he's, you feel it. He wants to just, sometimes we say, you gotta feel it before he can heal it. Um, I don't think it's a thing something we have to experience every day. But when things like that rise, he's saying, give it to me now, give it to me, yield to me. And uh, Jesus said, those who believe upon me out of their innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. So this is the, this is the thing, is, is that we've got to come to a place of getting rid of the brokenhearted places in us so that we can go higher in God and function in a whole nother level of authority. That's what's happening. He's exalting you, First Peter. Uh, five, it says, uh, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in the Kairos season. Kairos season. We're coming into the last Kairos. First Peter 1 Peter 1.5, unto you being kept by the power of God unto a salvation ready to be revealed in the last Kairos. It's a special season that we're coming into. And he needs to have you exalted to a level to overcome. And he's going to raise you up. He's doing that. But there's a challenge. He has to deal with the pains of our heart. It's going to be okay. He's going to get us through it all. Amen. Anything else? Yeah, you know. Next. Yeah, you know, Sean, sorry. I just feel the Lord really wants to encourage you that you're pressing in. You could run the other way and you're not. And he has a great future for you of fulfillment and of his love and of things that have, um, I feel like you're scaling a, a sheer cliff uh, and it's a mountain of disappointment, but you're climbing it and there is glory on the top. The Lord is going to surprise you and you are a beloved son to him. He's really proud of you. He really is. Amen. I just want to say, Sean, I feel like the Lord's saying, one of your major problems is, is you don't think you're as great as I think I, you are. That's what the Lord's saying. That's your problem. By the way, it's everybody's problem. <laughs> it's your problem too out there, you know, and the millions that are watching online. But uh, it's, uh, the fact is, is, is that uh, that's what he was telling me. When you look in the mirror, when you start seeing me inside you, it changes everything. I put myself inside you. you don't, you're not supposed to think of the way that you think about yourself. You ask me how I think about you. That's for everybody here today, including me. Yeah, you know, that's, that's taped, isn't it? Yeah. Was that taped, Keith? The word thank you, so we can get you a copy of that so you can hear him again. You know, I just wanted to say for Dan Aparicio, Dan, I just was praying and I just felt like the Lord said, this year is a year of promotion for you. Uh, and in the business realm, you have asked to be able to give even more into the kingdom in various ways. And he's going to grant that to you. And that what you do with the homes that you have is a truly a ministry of his heart to the broken so i there's promotion and increase coming in 2024 for you praise god well in just a moment i'll have raylene come up with some uh, wonderful announcements and as she's coming uh, I'll just pray over the offering and thank you. Thank you today for worship and those beautiful songs and all of that. That was beautiful as usual.
And uh, so in just a few minutes, we'll receive the offering. And I just want to say thank you to all of you that have been giving. And uh, Lord, I just want to thank you for the faithful offerings, and tithes and offerings of the people who have given online as well. And I want to thank you for today. The best is yet to come. I thank you for watching over us all at this time. Thank you for watching over us and our finances, Lord. Blessing those who are giving, Lord, and faithful. And thank you for your love and mercy that I felt during the time today when Andre was talking or just speaking out. I felt like, you know, I thought, well, we'll wait until the presence of the Lord is made clear to everybody and you were experiencing what I was, the love of God, the tenderness of God, knocking on my heart in new ways and so forth. And then Andre basically gets up and starts saying it. So it was very, very encouraging. But anyway, Lord, thank you for the offering today. Thank you for the worship today. Thank you for your kids that are here. In Jesus' name, amen. So we'll have the offering take in just a few minutes if you're giving by cash, credit card. Did we put it up there? Cash and credit card and um, what's the other way? Uh, check. Oh, check. And uh, you can write a check to TGP in just a few minutes. That'll be great. Yeah, thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Next week we have a Christmas party. We're having chicken dinner. And that's $5 per person. Kids are free. I'm going to pass around some sign-up sheets if you haven't signed up already. Um, I do need some help uh, next Sunday at 9 o'clock if anybody can get here, men or women, to help set up tables and chairs out in the courtyard. And we'll also need some people to put them back where they came from. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that this morning I walked in and I just, I kept looking at all the people and they looked pregnant. <laughs> just pregnant with, <laughs> with promise. And I know it's supposed to be a year of surprises, but <laughs> everybody was pregnant and just ready to give birth. So anyways, there you are here. I'm going to pass these around. That was a very good word. Thank you. Came from the heart, didn't it? Pregnant with what? Your destiny. It's coming forth. It's a progressive thing that happens, the unraveling of God's purposes inside you. So, yeah, um, we'll go ahead, Lord. Thank you for the offering. Thank you for blessing the people in Jesus' name. I am um, going to give you a little bit of an oversight of what happened in 1998, which I've said before. And uh, what it was is I was coming out of um, Vienna. I've been ministering. I was by myself, I was ministering to some, I think I was in two or three different nations, and the Lord, you heard this story before, I'm reading the Bible, and he says, will you take the stronghold out of nowhere, you know? I said, yes, can you put up 2 Samuel chapter, uh, 2 Samuel 5, did I give you that? I hope I did, 2 Samuel 5. Um, I knew this verse, it's also in, sec it's in uh, Chronicles, but the verse was, um, when David took the stronghold of Jerusalem, the word, sometimes they use a different word. The king and his men marched to Jerusalem to attack the Jebusites. Now, notice it's gonna be Jerusalem. Now, um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a background on this. Uh, Joshua died in um, 13, wherever it was, uh, 150, I think it was. It was about 300 years later that, um, uh, he died in, in uh, where was it here? Joshua died in 1350 BC. David is gonna now take Jerusalem in around 1010 BC. So it was several hundred years. That actually was very encouraging to me because the Lord gave me this word. He said, I want you to take the stronghold. I said, yes, what is that? He says, it's Hollywood. If you, for you to have revival in LA and for me to take the city in LA, you're gonna have to deal with the stronghold, the highest place in LA, which is Hollywood. And um, the Lord had said something to Pam and I both 10 years earlier that we would have an effect on what came out of Hollywood in September of 1988. And there were other things that people had said over the years 
And um, I had no idea how difficult it would be. And I even say now, people would come into this church and say, well, you know, I don't know if they're called to Hollywood. And I would say, yeah, there's really not much that we can say about ourselves as being uh, involved. But um, I found out that the Lord told me some things. He said, you know, it, uh, he says, I'm still taking Jerusalem myself. You know, he was there 2,000 years ago and he was rejected and crucified there, isn't that true? But Jerusalem's gonna be the, the headquarters of uh, earth when Jesus returns. But he said, will you take the stronghold? I said, yes. And uh, I had no idea, you know, so David went ahead and took the stronghold. I won't go into any details there. But the Lord told me, you know, I want you to take the stronghold over LA. Okay, great. So we obviously have a church of several thousand and we have an army of several thousand and we've taken, you know, no. <laughs> that we've been praying and, um, and, and having angels come. In fact, it was a week ago, it was before Chris came, Pam and I were up in Carmel and we're, I'm leading the prayer movement, or the prayer meeting. Pam goes into a very heavy travail, which was wonderful for a long time, and it didn't exhaust her like it usually did. And she felt like something had really been birthed. Well, basically what happened was that day, and it's happened many times before, I've seen the Lord in the heavenlies walk by, you know, when I'm praying and leading prayer, and he just wink at me and just walk on by, you know? And uh, I mean, this has been going on for a long time, but this whole issue about Chris and the reason I wanted Lisa to come up is because we've now been given a whole contingent of angels and of much more power and authority, but we've been functioning under this for many years. I mean, I'm sure, I would think over 30, 35 years for sure that we've known something about these kind of things, but now it's becoming more and more present because now is the time. I want to put up Isaiah 25, uh, I think it's verse uh, 6 through 9. But Lisa was talking about the darkness that she felt. I was coming in last night, flying into L.A., and I'm looking at it on the airplane, you know, all these lights, and I said, Lord, you know, there was somebody who, and I think the Lord maybe have told me one time, about 10 million, but I said, Lord, can you give us 18 million people? Why not? I, they say that there's about 20 million people in Southern California. And um, I'm thinking, but Lord, I, I don't want anybody to perish. So I have my five little prayers that I pray. Jesus, bring Lord, bring conviction of sin by the power of the Holy Spirit. It says that he, the spirit of truth, when he comes, he will convict the world of sin, of sin because they don't believe in Jesus. So I've been praying. Lord, I pray for a radical, overwhelming conviction of sin upon me and everybody in the church for not believing in Jesus, let alone all those who don't even know God. I pray that. Then I say, then I, I want them to be so deeply committed and convicted of that sin that for days they will not be able to function normally. This is what I pray. Then uh, I also pray, I pray, Lord, that they would be overwhelmed by the power of the Holy Spirit that would invade them and you would fill them with what the Bible talks about, us having the latter rain, which would be the Feast of Tabernacles, and that's seven times more powerful, they say, in the natural. And I'm saying for a baptism of the Holy Ghost that will more than shake, shake buildings, but will shake whole cities. I'm saying that spirit, that's what I'm saying to the Lord. Then I'm saying I want you to heal us of all brokenheartedness, cast out all demons, and give us a hunger to be your disciple. Those are my five points. I had someone very famous in history who actually came to me and said, um, I won't go into it, but he just said, um, the, the Lord has heard those prayers. The Lord has heard those prayers. So I'm expecting conviction of sin to come upon our city. Conviction of what? Of not believing in Jesus. That's the beginning of everything. And I want that more than anything else. I say, Lord, don't. So I'm flying over the city. I go, can you give us at least 18 million in Southern California? Here there's over 20, 20 million. I don't care, but I'm just saying. So here's the verse. Did we put up Isaiah? Oh, Isaiah 25, uh, 7 through 9. I didn't send it, I guess, huh? Okay, well, Isaiah 25, 7 through 9. So far, sorry, Betsy. Um, it basically says what Lisa saw. And, uh, but we're gonna, it's gonna be over the whole earth. Um, yeah, 25, Isaiah 25, seven, and uh, seven through nine. Or actually, let's see, Isaiah 25. Is it up there now? Is it uh, on this mountain? On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all the people, the sheet that covers all nations. Now this is the problem, listen carefully now. I'm gonna go over a little bit today because I need to get this out. I don't wanna carry this another few days. <laughs> the Lord is going to deal with the principalities and powers over LA and over Hollywood. Hallelujah. 
Now, when I told Bob Jones, I said, we were called to Hollywood, he goes, oh, that's the world. And he never said anything encouraging to me about it. <laughs> it's a world spirit you're dealing with there. It's like, oh, no. Then someone else who I really adore and who was a mentor to me, and Bob Jones is probably listening. If I know him, you know, he's probably <laughs> here. But anyway... Uh, but it was like it was discouraging. Then Neville Johnson said he saw the principality over Hollywood. He said, I don't ever want to have to deal with that thing. And I'm sitting there thinking <laughs> to the Lord, I'm in a car. I'm in a car, and I'm just getting out to go into a meeting or something. This is many years ago, like 15 years ago. I said, Lord, shoot, what's going on here, you know? Neville says he doesn't want to deal with that thing. And, you know, nobody would if they knew what it was really like, you know, and some of the things that we've gone through, but by the grace of God. But anyway, what I'm saying is, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Hallelujah to that. Amen. So this is what the Lord's going to do. He says, I'm going to swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from their faces. He will remove the people's disgrace. He's saying, I'm going to cleanse the heavens. Here's the problem. In the whole wide world, the heavens are not being cleansed. After all is said and done. You say, why? How do you know? Because I don't see people being under convicted of sin in the city that I live in. I don't know about you. Now, I've read enough about it. He said it's going to be like the Hebrides revival. They were being saved on the way to church. They were being saved early in the morning. They were being saved. Because, listen, it was the, it was the presence of God over the whole area there. He says, you know, from the, all the earth, the Lord has spoken. Now, verse 9 uh, can you go there? It says, in that day they will say, surely this is our God. We have trusted in him. When he opens the heavens, they'll say, oh my goodness, there is a God. A God consciousness is coming to the church, to the apostles and prophets and whoever else. And by the way, I'm going to teach you a little bit about this today. But in Revelation, all the way from chapter 1 to uh, the end of the uh, book, there, there's at least 75 or 76 mentions of the word angel or angels plural. It, it very, doesn't deal a whole lot with, with saints. He deals with the churches and shakes them all up in chapter 2 and 3. He has a remnant that he catches up to heaven, and with Michael they throw Satan down to the earth, which is what Adam and Eve were supposed to do, and, uh, and what the church is supposed to do. But we've now come to a time at the end of the age when Adam's lease is almost up, and Jesus has to have people fulfilled some verses like, <clears throat> For example, Psalm 110, sit at my right, right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Your people will be willing the day of your power. The day of the Lord's power is beginning to come now. He's beginning to give his church authority, and these are angels that come down. I never tell them ever what to do. They come down on an assignment, an assignment from God. And as we hook up with them, we move under the authority of the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God rules over all. That's what's happening, right? So anyway, what it happens is, is that I'm sitting there thinking, you know, Lord, man, you called me to Hollywood. No one would even know that our church is called to Hollywood except we say it occasionally once in a while. But he said, look, Rick, he said, it took, it took me, I sent Joshua into the promised land. It was over, I think it's over roughly 300 years until David took Jebus, which was now called Jerusalem, which, David, which David's called it the city of David. And even now, Jerusalem, they've only taken half of it. They've lost control of it. They gave it away. All the nations have, you know, made them, battered them down. But God's going to come back, and he's going to take Jerusalem. But God's also going to bind the strong man. That was a big problem because I, I didn't really understand it. But when the Lord said, will you take uh, Hollywood, he was saying, you're going to have to cleanse the heavens over Los Angeles to do that, Rick. So Jesus, when he comes, if we can go to Matthew chapter 4, verses, uh, I think it's verse... 10 I gave you. Jesus is being tempted of the devil. He's in the wilderness. This is where the Lord said to me today, he goes, it was very good. He goes, you know, I bound the devil in secret in the wilderness. That's what you have to do. I bound the devil secret in the wilderness. How did he bind him? The devil said, Jesus said to him after the end of the temptation, he says, get away from me, Satan. He says, worship, only worship the Lord thy God and serve him only. That's when he bound him. My temptation's over, Satan. Get out of here. Leave me alone. I've given you no place. John 14, 30. You got it? So I have to be holy. I have to be pure. I have to be, you know, obedient to the Lord. And 
I was walking up out of here about three or four weeks ago, and the Lord said, will you accept the fact that I've bound Satan and uh, put him beneath your feet? And I was totally shocked. I wouldn't have said that about myself. This is all Romans 16, 19 through 11. And it says, if you're wise concerning that which is good, the simple concerning evil, the God of peace will bruise Satan beneath your feet shortly. He says, I bruise Satan beneath your feet. Will you accept that? If you say so, Lord. Yeah, I've said this before, but I was shocked. Me? So he wouldn't have just said it to me. He has to be saying it to you guys, to those who come, those who are part of our church. Because we have an assignment. It always goes back to what Jesus said. When he came, he said, Matthew 12, 29, I believe I gave you. You must first bind the strong man before evangelism or anything really can really take off. You have to first bind the strong man. We all say hallelujah, you know, but nobody's done it in LA. I know for sure. I know I haven't. I know I haven't had that authority, but we're being given authority. Are we the only one? I don't know. I have no idea. He may have told other guys the same thing. I'm not saying it's only me or only our church. I don't know, but I know for sure that we've been doing it for about 25 years now because I was told this in, January, in uh, October 12th of 1998, and we were told 10 years before that that we would have an effect at what came out of Hollywood, okay? So yesterday I'm up in, uh, uh, where was I, honey? <laughs> Phoenix. And um, this lady comes up to me, very sweet. She goes, you know, my, uh, I, I watch you on, she goes, yeah, who, who are you? I, yeah. I said, oh, she goes, I, I watch you. I know I knew you. I watch you on you know, online. She goes, my mom lives here, or lives in Burbank. She goes, you know, your church has a lot of authority. It's really affecting the area down there. Now, someone who's here today told me that this individual was in Orange County and seeing a church that was being blessed, and the, the Lord told this individual that's uh, because of the gathering place's uh, prayers. Now, I would never say that, but somebody who I really trust told me that, Otherwise, I'm not, I don't want to toot my horn. I'd rather not even have a horn because it just, it just gathers more problems. I don't need, you know, I remember I had an experience that was pretty radical before the kids were born. So about 1980, I walk up on this mountain and all of a sudden, dear Lord, you know, wow, this is amazing. And he talks to me and then I take Pam back there and uh, there was a cross right there. It said, come, let's go to the mountain of the Lord. That had happened after I had been there. And I, huh? In cement, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but I realized the Lord said, Rick, that was the day that I showed you to the devil, that I, I exposed you because I, I, you know, and so it's like, that's, that's why you're having problems down there, boy, you know? Because <laughs> he, you know? he talked to me about this region. Oh, boy. It caused me a lot of problems, a lot of tests and trials, and so are you, you're going through the same thing. All of you, whether you've ever had these kinds of things happening, you're going through a lot because if you're here, if you're actually believing in us or whatever, or believing, or part of this, or any other church that has a call to LA, I mean a call to bind the strong man so that people can be saved, I wanna see millions saved in Southern California. Not just to have a big church or a small church. I don't care. Just get them saved, God. Get them discipled. Get them, filled. get them convicted of sin of not believing in Jesus. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Cast out all their devils. Heal their heart wounds. And give them a hunger to, be, to know the living God and be a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's our calling. Everybody's calling. What else is there? People are going to hell. God's going to do something about it. He's going to bind the strong man over Los Angeles. Here you go. That's what's happening. So um, it, it, we've been doing this for 25 years. The Lord said it was hundreds of years before David, after I gave him the promised land, I waited for David to take it. Because David was officially, really, the first king of Israel. I mean, I know Saul was, but Samuel, when he anointed David, there was the kingdom, and with the kingdom, David took the high place. The Jebusites said, you can't get in here. You can't take this. They mocked David. David took it, and he named it after himself. That's gonna be the center of the earth, maybe the whole universe, I don't know. 
But when Jesus comes, he's not going to Burbank or to Minnesota or any place else. <laughs> he's going to Jerusalem. He's going to put his throne there. He wants, to put his, he wants to put a throne that his kingdom rules over this area. And these angels are so important. Yeah, I just want to tell you something that the Lord said to me, and I'm going to read something that he gave me. And uh, you'll have to suffer for like 10 more minutes. But what happened was, is, is that when the Lord begins to come in tremendous power, people should know about it. Don't you think? When Jesus started coming upon the earth, it said his fame went everywhere. People were screaming and yeah, they were calling their friends and relatives, you know, on the email or whatever. He's here, he's there. They, you know what I'm saying? They were loving, they were following him. Because why? Because he was so incredibly awesome. Now listen to this word I got. Angels, oh, and that's a big thing. The Lord said, look, I want you to tell the people, Rick, I'm using angels in the book of Revelation like I've never used before. It's the only book in the Bible that has over 75 or 76 references to the word angel or plural angels. He goes, it's because I'm bringing my heavenly host. You know, the biggest word of use, the name for the Lord, is not Jesus. It's the Lord of hosts, the captain of the armies of heaven. He's king of kings and lord of lords. That's what he's called when he's coming back. He's ruling and reigning. He's going to rule and reign through a remnant on the earth before he comes. He's going to be living in them, ruling through them. That's what I've said. He wants to rule you so he can rule through you. He's going to make you kings and priests if you're faithful to him. Now it says this. He said, the Lord said, on the angels that have been with the Lord before the world, they were tested and tried when Satan took the throne, wanted to go and take the throne, and one third of the angels left. Two thirds did not. Satan wanted to take the throne. Isaiah 14, down he goes. That's what Adam and Eve should have done. They didn't. The Lord, the devil, the Lord threw the devil down to the earth when it was out form and void. Then he recreates the world, and there's Adam and Eve in a garden and everything, and Satan's going, what the heck? He's giving them authority. That's what I wanted. So he goes after Adam and Eve, and you know the story, okay? So here it is. Angels that had been with the Lord for, who knows, millennia, thousands of years, they were tested and tried like Satan. Satan went around and tested all the angels. One third of them said, you're stronger than the Lord. Let's go. We're with you, buddy. Whoosh, down they went, man, instantly. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall. Like a, like a lightning from the earth, and all of those one-third of the angels, which now rule the heavens. You got that? They now rule the heavens. They are in charge. God needs another Cyrus. He needs another Nebuchadnezzar. He gave those men authority over the whole earth realm. God's going to raise up men, even politicians, prophets, whatever, I don't know, but he's going to raise up people that have more authority than the governments of this earth do because they'll be functioning under the kingdom of God that rules for over all. There's coming a tremendous move of angelic power through Michael and his angels, but there are thousands, millions, there's demonic powers and evil powers and the angels that are coming. But in the book of Revelation, it's all opening up. Why? Because it's the day of the Lord. He's going to show the whole earth that he's boss, and he's going to draw them unto himself. That's what he said he's going to do. And uh, I want to um, just read this. I'll get through it here. Angels that have been with the Lord for who knows how long, they were tested and tried just like Satan. And some of their friends, angelic, their, their angelic friends, turned evil and were cast to the earth. And they were the ones who stayed with the Lord, two-thirds of them, double than the ones who left. And the ones who left were cast down to the earth. Satan was cast down to the earth. He will be cast down to the earth again by Michael and his angels and the man-child, what's called the man-child, or the sons and daughters of God, which I've explained to you more and more. It says when that woman in chapter 12 was, was uh, pregnant, she gave forth, forth a weos, which is a son of God. But it, then it talks about they, 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 they. What it was is it was the manifestation of the Holy Spirit birthing the church, a portion of the church, into full sonship, men and women. 
because in the beginning, God gave the authority and dominion on the earth to a man and his wife, to a man and a woman. He's giving it back again to men and women who were born of the power of the Holy Spirit who go on to be filled with the fullness of God. That's what the Bible talks about. That's the calling of every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, to train the saints, raise them up, and have them filled with the fullness and the stature of Christ. That's what this woman gives birth to. Off they go, and they are seated in the heavenly praises. They have, along with Michael, threw the angel, the demonic powers down. Now, in these last days, these other two-thirds of these angels, they can't wait to enforce Jesus' victory. They're so ready to come down. Say, Lord, please, let us really do it this time, you know. Let us, let us really break the power of the devil over Hollywood, over L.A., that has deceived people for 6,000 years. Not Hollywood, it hasn't, not that old, but what I'm saying is, since the fall of mankind, demonic powers are ruling. Who's ruling uh, uh, Hollywood? Demonic power is, buddy. Who's ruling in D.C. right now? Demonic powers are. Who's ruling in Sacramento? Evil people, perverts, all kinds of weird stuff going on that none of us would ever think would happen. Demonic, it's evil. God's gonna deal with it all. But he's gotta have men and women who stand with him, who he can trust with giving that kind of authority, which is what? Bind the devil. You know, it was so interesting about, oh, it was last Tuesday, Last Tuesday, we were praying, uh, leading a Tuesday night prayer meeting, and our precious sister, Rebecca, she says, you know, Pater, Pastor, because uh, we were praying these very things like Lisa was talking about. She goes, you know, I, I get the strangest thing. I see like a fog in people's minds, and the Lord removes that fog, and they get a whole new perspective about abortion. I, That's exactly what we're doing. You know, it's like, whoa. Wait, wait, hap wait, what happens when people are convicted that abortion is killing babies? What's going to happen then? Then when they find out if they become a Christian, the babies are up in heaven and they're waiting for their mommies to name them, you know, or whatever. But what's going to happen when people find out how bad things really are? and that hatred and racism and all these kinds of things, hating people of different skin color, all of that is of the devil. And people begin to realize, you know, when I was, I was by myself traveling up there, and uh, there was a couple, they were a mixed race, and uh, he, w he was a really big guy, she was a big woman, and they were sitting there, but they had four, little, four young children, and uh, when I walked up to them, at the end I said, uh, you guys are really good parents. He was a big man, African-American guy, big guy. We had a short conversation. When I left, I said goodbye to him and so forth. But to see them minister to their four kids right next to me really blessed me. I said, you are really good parents. And I'll just tell you, that dude and I, we bonded right then. And his wife. Just being kind, it's incredible. We need more, and I told him, I said, this is what we need in America. We need a family like you guys. And uh, why? Because they were loving their children, not raising them up. Some of the worst raising of children is over there in Israel in a place called Gaza. If you kill Jews, God will bless you. That's of the devil. That's the devil. And so God's going to deal with all this stuff. He's got, his, he's got his plan. So here's, I'll see if I can get through this here. Okay. So, uh, they, uh, yeah. So they, along with Satan, they fell like lightning to the earth. And uh, the Bible says in James chapter 2, verse 19, the devils believe and tremble. You know why they tremble? They saw what Jesus did to them. He threw them out. It was boom, one thing, that was it. Put up Revelation 16, 10. Did I give you that? I hope I did. And uh, Revelation 16, 10, it's just, I like it because it shows me the absolute sovereign power of God. I don't have to worry about demonic powers. One angel is going to take care of this. By the way, everything that goes on in all the bowls and all that, it's always angels doing it. Did you notice that? It's angels. It's not the church. It's angels doing it. It's a big revelation. It's like The fifth angel, he poured out his bowl on the, on the throne of the beast, 
And his kingdom, oh shoot, it plunged into darkness. One angel did it. One angel killed 185,000 people when uh, Isaiah prayed, you know. What I'm saying is these angels are mega powerful, my friends. One angel is going to stand in the sun and the moon or whatever in chapter 10 of Revelation. It's like, I don't know how tall this, I don't know if he's 10 miles high or what. I have no idea. But these angels are very, very powerful. They come under the authority of Jesus Christ, creator of heaven and earth, and God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. So I'm just telling you, these angels that are coming and helping us and so forth, they are in total charge of what's happening. They're sent from heaven. But God wants to use Adams and Eves on the earth because he gave us dominion on the earth, but he has, uses these angels to cleanse the heavens, but he needs to have somebody down there on the earth. Adam and Eve will take dominion on the earth. It's a conglomeration of heaven and earth coming together. Angelic powers coming under the power of the Holy Ghost and the people living in the Holy Spirit moving together. The kingdom of God will be brought to the earth. That's what we're after. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's your calling. And angels, you'll never be able to do it without them. It says in uh, Exodus 23, 20, he says, I'm going to send my angel ahead of you. He says, I'm going to send the hornet ahead of you. I'm going to bring all your enemies into total confusion. You'll never lose a battle unless you got sin. That's what she was realizing today. The seventh chapter of, of, uh, of uh, Judges. Was it Judges or Joshua? But anyway, what I'm saying is, is this is very important. People are going to hell. Jesus said, you got to first find the strong man. Jesus went and dealt with the strong man. He was tempted in the wilderness and he bound him in the wilderness by what? Not giving him place. That's how he bound him. Satan couldn't touch him until it was time. Oh, he persecuted him, he did all kinds of stuff, but he couldn't, he couldn't do anything about stopping him from going and being the savior of the world. It was impossible. God's will is for you to be victorious in every area of your life, that's it. The angels of God are coming. They're coming down. Now, just the other day, I felt it twice. I thought, I just feel happier. I feel like people are getting better thoughts in their mind. So I'll just quit now. But anyway, uh, that's it. We are called to take Hollywood. We're called to, that's it. I'm done. Amen. You got it? Okay. Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah. I I oh, you can't do that. They have to do it on back there. Uh oh. Oh, there. Um, I just, I don't think I made it clear about the map. Uh, so, Olga, could you stand up? Olga has the map and she has the little dots. And again, the purpose of that is just for us to get an overview of what areas we're covering, where we, you know, this, we're putting dots where we live. It's gonna take a little bit of time because then you're gonna need to write down an email for us to contact you with. Because when we do those Zoom calls, which are gonna be kind of critical, um, I don't know if we'll do them all together. Or we'll probably give you a few different time slots so that we can kind of get everybody um, you know, your schedules may conflict. So please make sure you put the dot on the map and give Olga uh, on the list, the corresponding number on the dot to the corresponding slot on the list where you put your email. Because we may break it into regions or we may, we'll see. We'll see what kind of response we get, okay? And we'll do this next week too during the party. That's what I'm gonna do, thanks. You know, let's just stand up before we go. Today was very intense for me. I had to get that out. I know that we went longer than usual. But the, prop, the thing is, is that I have to get that out. I don't want to carry that to next week. There's no way. So, Lord, let's just say that, Lord, we just come before you. We want to see millions, millions of people saved. In fact, forget that. We want to see billions of people saved. Billions. Israel is at war right now. And Lord, we lift up Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, Lord. We lift up all the Palestinians. We lift up all the Israelis, Lord. And we say, save them, Lord. 
Open the heavens over Jerusalem. Open the heavens over Israel. Lord, deliver Benjamin Netanyahu from the powers of the UN. You know, the uh, United States did veto them trying to force them to stop it. Did you know that? We did. That, that's a miracle. We need to pray more and more for the Biden administration right now that they will not force them, try to get them to, uh, to uh, shut off that war. It has to finish itself, Lord, and your will be done, Lord, not anybody else's, not anybody else's, Lord, but your will be done in Israel. Let Israel do what you have called them to do at this time. Your angels are clearly at war, Lord, right now. They're ministering to people, probably on both sides, but we know that we've heard clear uh, stories of um, what they thought were some kind of a rabbi or holy man, Lord. And uh, we thank you for watching over Israel, Lord, and for your name to be glorified. Keep us ever mindful of the day, how serious this time is with Israel. And what uh, Marty taught last week was so over the top. But Lord, we just thank you that this is a very, very time. So let's just pray right now out loud. Just go ahead and pray for Israel. Just do it on your own. Pray in tongues, pray in English, whatever. Lord God, save us. <laughs> No one's going to wipe out that nation, Lord. No one's going to wipe out that nation, Lord. You have them in the palm of your hand, and we pray for Benjamin Netanyahu, all of the men, all the soldiers, Lord, all the people, Lord. And, Lord, we pray for more and more of the truth to come out of how terrible things were, Lord, and among the Hamas, Lord, and what they've done and what's been going on with the uh, people who have been released, Lord. All of that, Lord, let it get out and spread it right out in the middle of every everybody lord right on main street lord what's really going on and turn hearts unto righteousness lord in jesus name turn hearts to righteousness lord open the heavens over israel lord open the heavens lord even over these universities that for the last 50 years have taught people and now we're seeing their their children as it were demonic powers of evil ruling our educational systems lord they they've got all these people standing against your purposes lord but you are well able to deal with it all and we lift up the nations of the earth to you, Lord, today. And even people choosing sides about Israel and all these terrible things that they're saying, Lord, we simply stand with you, Lord. Thy kingdom come. Thy will, thy will, thy will, thy will be done, Lord. Open people's hearts and minds to the glory of God. Turn billions of people back to you, Lord. You know, last November we just crossed over 8 billion. That's how many are in the world now. And so, Lord, we pray for a radical move of God in the heavens and on the earth like we've never known before. You know, and here's the thing. This is what I'll leave you with. You were born for this time. Bob Jones had a word. Years ago, it was called the sands of time. And this is what it was. He saw these holy men of God going, putting their fingers and hands in the sands of time. And many of them were trying to come up. And, you know, one of them, I think, was a famous prophet. I forget his name. And he said, God, if you only give me 200 man, men, we'll take the world. And the Lord showed Bob Jones. He said, look, get that. Go down in there and grab it. He goes, there's something down there. And it was an old shoebox, if I remember. And he said, lift up. And there were the names of, of men that he knew and would eventually meet. And he said, I've saved the best of every bloodline for the last. So you better think a little higher about yourself than you do. You're going to fulfill what grandma and grandpa couldn't do or your aunt who was this or that. But Lord, this is not to be proud, but this is to say, boy, oh boy, oh boy, I've got to make my days count for God. You're the best of your bloodline in the name of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much today. Amen. The Gathering Place.